Thank you. Hello, good morning and good afternoon and warm welcome from my side again to this pump session. My name is Paul Dietl, working as industry manager uh, for fluid machinery in the SCAF group and my co-speaker will be Christoph Auer, experienced senior engineer from business development, angular contact ball bearings in SKF. We have a tight agenda today. We decided that we pack a little bit more information maybe into this uh, session as, as usual, just to make sure that all people who are listening or practically everybody has something in this where he can take value from. So, so some slides I will more refer to existing materials so that you can dig into the material later if you're interested in more details. So we'll have a short introduction, some overview of the SKF offer, but very brief for the pump industry. And then we go into technical details on pump bearing design and mounting. Um, and as a major next part, show some solutions for real cases out there in the field and in the end present some latest innovation on, on fiber optic sensing and have a Q&A session. So let's start with introduction of uh, three slides on what is driving the pump industry. Of course, I don't have to explain you that uh, pumps are everywhere in the world, but still it's surprising to see some of the numbers on the screen if you look on the left bottom image 50,000 pumps in a, in a larger process or chemical plant in Germany. It's quite amazing. There is a rule of thumb that you have typically as many pumps in such a plant as you have employees or even more pumps than employees nowadays. Or on the right side, 3,000 pumps in a typical paper mill. Or if you look on the image on the top right, this is our factory here where we are sitting in Austria and all these red flags indicate different kinds of pumps. So actually this is where Christoph and myself are sitting here in Austria in the SKF factory in Steyr. What is driving the pump business or what give, will give it a, a bright future is some uh, information that is giving here two point on the left side, 2.5 billion people do not have access yet to adequate sanitation in the world. Or US government has proposed to spend around 100 billion in uh, renewing the systems for drinking water, wastewater and stormwater systems. So there will be a bright future for this type of business. Some, as a last introduction slide, some important pump trends that we are seeing and we are working on with uh, our solutions is energy efficiency, of course, which is both how you operate the pump or how, how the bearing is designed or how fast it has to go. Maintenance free operation, of course, we will talk in this uh, session here. Integrated systems is a big trend, motor pumps, canned pumps, and of course sensors, connectivity, condition monitoring, and machine learning. In the special pumps area, a big topic uh, is poor lubrication, thin films, oil dilution, high temperatures, low viscosities, especially when it comes to new media, for example, as part of the energy system change that is necessary in the world. We deal with a lot of new media which are partly not so nice to the bearings. Uh, or even we customers would like to run the pumps oil free and only lubricate the bearings with the media in the pump. And then uh, we have also an interesting project running on a program running on vacuum pump bearings. When it comes to the SKF for portfolio for the pump industry, you will see it's quite wide. Uh, I will give you only a short overview because some details we will present later. Of course, all of you know that SKF is making bearings, all types of bearings. You see it on the top row here. I would like to point out uh, specifically on the left, the hybrid ceramic bearings, which we will talk uh, a lot today. Or on the right side, um, we will not have to, time to talk about insulated bearings, as we call it, electrically insulating bearings, but especially for, uh, 
for drives, pump drives with variable frequency uh, converters, high frequency converters, we see sometimes bearings are damaged by the electric currents and there is specific offer as SKF has also there. And SKF is doing more than bearings, as most of you also might know, of course, seals, sleeves, uh, even couplings. But there is much more that we will see. SKF is uh, has a wide product range, for example, maintenance product tools like shaft alignment tools in all kinds of executions. This is a rather new system, very simple, uh, lower cost based on uh, you know, the modern technology on the mobile telephone, etc. Very easy to install. And SKF is very large also in lubrication systems. And uh, recently, or of course, everybody is working a lot in the digital and the mechatronics area. So here SKF, maybe only a few people know that SKF is also a market leader in the magnetic, magnetic bearings area and for permanent magnetic motors, especially in the oil and gas field. But uh, recently also in the area of chillers and blowers, etc. And what is brand new is fiber optic sensing. And we will have uh, this at the end of this presentation. Last word on the SKF group in general is we are uh, a global group, of course, and uh, this showed also with our many manufacturing units, 91 manufacturing units, and with our multiple supply routes that, especially for the bearings we are talking about here today, also even during these difficult times of COVID, we were able to supply and serve our customers via all our distributors and technology centers. Okay, let's go into the technical section uh, now before we go to some uh, field cases. I hope you will find some information here useful and we will give and also Elin will share some links in the chat as I understand so you can have a, a reference to material to study later on. First of all, some very core pieces of information which also is very relevant for pump application engineering. The rolling SKF rolling bearing catalog has become a very big compendium and there is even as we will see some specific topics on pumps in there explained how to calculate pump bearings, how to cho choose pump bearings. We have an own bear, uh, handbook which is available externally, bearings and centrif centrifugal pumps. It's not the newest anymore but this the information in there is still very relevant and very well laid out. And then if you're looking for the latest information go to the skf.com homepage and uh, specifically to the Evolution magazine. On skf.com you will find for free some very good and partly very advanced SKF tools to design, to choose and design and calculate, analyze bearings in pumps. First of all, a tool I like very much because it's so intuitive and simple is the SKF bearing select. And uh, in yellow here, you see some things you can calculate with this tool, which you maybe would not expect, like friction losses or bearing frequencies or the bearing life according to a new life theory, which we will explain later, or minimum bearing loads, which sometimes is very important for pump bearings. Then for the workshops and for the factories, we have the bearing assist app, quite new also, which gives you a step-by-step -step guidance through the bearing selection and especially the mounting process. And then a really unique service of SKF is uh, we have a very advanced tool called SimPro in SKF to analyze in 3D and uh, transient, transient uh, modes, uh, the behavior and also vibration behavior of complete applications, including shafts and housings, but there is a stripped down version which you can, if you ask your sales uh, responsible from SKF, 
a sales account, if you ask him, you can get access to this tool called Simpro Quick. And then you can do, as mentioned here, 3D simulations of an entire system, shaft, bearings, even gears. You can deal with lubrication with springs, spaces, and also model in certain way, uh, in a simplified way, the housing. Internally, we can do more, but also as a customer yourself on site, you can use this tool. And of course, you can calculate a lot of uh, things that is happening in the, in the bearing. We will have an example or even two later on showing how this tool is used by customers. A very important uh, point in the new catalog also on SKF.com is this when you are rather new maybe to bearing design, the SKF bearing selection process that was developed is an eight step kind of wizard or practical guide to go through to make this bearing choice and selection in the right order. It's listed here, so you see a lot of topics that have to be considered when you want to have a good bearing arrangement design, a good application design. And um, you find all this information on skf.com. And what I mentioned before, in the catalog, if you have it, and you can get it from your sales rep representative if you don't have it, on page 228, uh, there is even a detailed example for a centrifugal pump, how you choose the bearing there, how you calculate the lubrication and operating conditions to make the right choice. A very good uh, kind of uh, school book example. Just have a quick look on, on the time. Okay. Uh, shaft fits are very important. This is one part of this bearing selection process. This is just to indicate, be careful when you choose uh, clearances and preloads in bearings, because the final preload or clearance you might have in the application might very strongly depend on the bearing shaft interferences. Here you see the values of the bearing shaft interference fit and how much for certain bearing clearance or preload classes in an angular contact ball bearing, the preload and the bearing can change. So be careful on that because it might also affect or it will affect bearing friction. If you go too much into the preload area, friction can go up very much. And of course the bearing life can be negatively affected. So we have a certain preferred range, which is different for different applications. For pumps, we normally say, okay, keep on the clearance side um, and don't move too much to the to the preload area for normal standard pumps. By the way, um, you all or most of you probably have done some bearing life calculations according to the ISO standard theory, but when you apply this and we will see examples, this theory to very poor, difficult lubrication or other difficult running conditions, you might find very low life calculated according to standard theory. But we know from a lot of experience that hybrid ceramic bearings, which we'll talk about more later, can run multiples of this lifetime, can run much longer than normal uh, steel bearings. And we, we said we need a specific life theory for, for that. And that is available now for hybrid bearings. It's called the new life model, or it's called the generalized bearing life model. And it's out there, it's in our tools, the tools I mentioned before, and it's taking into account not only the classical Hertzian subsurface of fatigue, but the surface uh, damage that can happen if you have very poor lubrication conditions. And just as an example here, without going into the numbers, for a tough case um, where bearing life, according to the classic theory, might be only 2,400 hours when you calculate it, if you use the new life theory uh, and you use uh, hybrid bearings and you apply the data, you end up with a multiple of, of this uh, classic life. And this is you know, data that is verified by a lot of experiments and testing. Some words on bearing handling and mounting. You know, very basic stuff, but it still happens. I only want to point out because the middle one is clear. 
only want to point out the left one. It still happens that bearings are mounted on the shaft by pushing on the outer ring. So please don't don't push the bearing to the shaft via the outer ring. You have to push on the inner ring, uh, which we will see in, in one of the next slides. Otherwise, you might end up with damages like seen on the right side here. Yeah, this now explains how to do it correctly in three steps. First of all, if you do it in, in the good way, you should heat up the bearing inner ring. For example, use an induction heating device. There's an SKF reference also here, just one example. You heat it up at least when it comes to angular contact ball bearings to 100 to 110 degrees. Then it's very easy usually to slide on the, the bearings, but of course the bearings will cool down very fast. And sometimes, and we see that in, in customer cases and complaints, it happens that there is still some remaining gaps between the bearings because the bearings were not pushed strongly enough on the shaft. So what you should do then, what we recommend that after this hot mounting, you give it a, a small a limited you know, hammer hit or punch, but using the right tool, pushing on the inner ring. And SKF has specific tools also for that to, to have it uh, correct in your factory. Okay, okay, type of. And then you fix the bearing with a certain uh, proper lock nut. Often the question also comes up, what should be the, the mounting torque of the lock nut or the XL clamping force? We have, SKF has for different types of bearing, different recommendations. Here you see some recommendations for angular contact ball bearings based on the static load capacity, which you find in the catalog. And I also recommend usually that uh, just to be sure that you really have no XL gaps, first tighten the nut a little bit more than the recommended uh, tightening torque. For example, 1.5 or two times the recommended torque or recommended uh, force. Then you open the nut again and you tighten it with the recommended torque. Because this, these values here on the safe side, you will not damage the, the bearing if you use in the first uh, clamping process, higher torques, and then you open and clamp again. Yeah, there is also a lot of information. This is KF maintenance and lubrication products catalog and a lot of information on these other tools that we mentioned. A uh, question that is often coming up is, and uh, you know, from the design point of view, one on the difficult side is vertical pumps, especially when it comes to larger vertical pumps or or bearing when it comes to bearing lubrication. So let's have a few, uh, some look on this one. You see some vertical pumps, typicals on the left side. And um, in the middle, you see a typical bearing arrangement, this time with two times a single angle of contact ball bearings. And normally, 40 degree bearings with 40 degree contact angle are used here. But in many cases, you have then either due to the gravity force or other forces, a dominating thrust load. And it might happen that one of these bearings, that we call it the backup bearing, gets unloaded because the other one is loaded so much and uh, there is movement displacement in, in the bearing set and this bearing gets unloaded and can get damaged. So if you see damages like those on broken cages or worn cages or balls that I have smearing marks, you might have this problem of unloaded or too loaded, loaded uh, backup bearing. And then it might be a good choice and it's used in the industry to use as the backup bearing, not the 40 degree, but the 25 degree or also 15 degree is available. The standard is 25, but special bearings we have with 15 degree also. And uh, what this backup bearing, this 25 bearing is kind of doing, it acts like a soft spring, like in this spring in Elegon. So it will make sure that even if there's a lot of deformation in the system, the bearings still provide or have an internal minimum preload so that uh, no slippage or no uh, smearing and slipping of the balls is happening. So this is a very important point and SKF has a standard solution for that. You will find these concepts also in an evolution article and I think Elin will share the link to this evolution article. 
Um, considering the time, there is a lot of information on this slide. Also, grease selection is a very important issue for vertical pumps, but I would say there are some references are given here on this slide. So if, if this is an important topic for you, take, take a screenshot of this slide and follow these references that are given, given here. Just to mention that, of course, for vertical pumps, the most important is the mechanical stability and the stiffness and LGI class of the of the grease. And please note that what is mentioned or noted marked in yellow here that normally we say as a rule of thumb, the grease life for vertical shafts will be about half compared to horizontal shafts, mainly due to the reason that due to the gravity, more uh, oil that is in the grease is, will be leaking out and, and the grease will be moving due to uh, the gravity forces. When it comes to oil lubrication for vertical pumps, SKF has a lot of good hints also in the material. So again here, check out uh, either the bearing uh, pump handbook or skf.com, uh, depending on the bearing type, like for example, this uh, spherical roller thrust bearing is here on the screen. You will find information how to design the oil flow and the oil level. Note also that this these type of bearings, they have a kind of pumping function. We will see that later on in, a, in an example. OK, so we will come to actually the main part here of the presentation, which is customer cases. I read yesterday in a book, uh, somebody, a philosopher said, the, the truth is in the field. And uh, I think that can be also applied this sentence uh, to bearing applications and pump applications. The truth is in the field. So only when after design, when the bearing perform in the field, when you get the experience from the field, you know it's really a good design. So now for the first slides, my colleague uh, Christoph will take over and explain you some interesting, rather new products and uh, product features we have on angular contact ball bearings. So Christoph, yes, I'll give you the control. Please go ahead. Thank you, Paul. So I will give you some uh, news about our uh, sealed single row contact ball bearing. So I have to check the, so now it works, okay. So sealed single row angular contact pole bearing, we introduced uh, several years ago for the market. So we equipped the single row angular contact pole bearing with two seals on each side. And uh, as we use a non-contacting seal, uh, we have the same load carrying capacity and the same uh, speed rating like uh, for the open pond also. It's uh, easy to interchange an open bearing with a sealed one. The bearings are greased for life. And um, uh, on the next slide, you can see a little bit uh, more in detail that we have a special seal lip design with a tiny gap between the inner ring and the seal itself. We have MBR uh, seals uh, with the permissible temperature up to 100 degrees Celsius. For some short periods, we allow 120 degree Celsius. If higher temperatures needed, we need to go for a white seal, for instance. As these uh, seals are non-contacting, we have uh, less friction for sure. And uh, due to this uh, lower temperature in the application itself, and this is very positive if it comes to grease life, for sure. In this graph, you can see this uh, temperature advantage. We have done a lot of uh, tests in our test lab here in Steyr, and you can see that, uh, that the average uh, bearing temperature and also the steady state uh, temperature from a bearing with the asset seal design, so we call it asset seal design, uh, is uh, with uh, yeah, a big advantage compared to contacting seals. If you have such a sealed uh, single row angular contact ball bearing, you can uh, eliminate uh, external uh, seals, for instance, or uh, additional lubrication tools. And uh, 
this leads uh, at the end to compact uh, design and also to uh, yeah, cost saving. As the bearings are sealed, then you have increased uh, process safety uh, during handling, during mounting, and also during the operation of the bearing. Some uh, would say if you have a vertical shaft application and the gap between inner ring and uh, the seal, then you have some oil plating. Uh, but uh, on uh, test uh, bench tests, uh, we could uh, say uh, we could see very good that uh, due to the lower friction or no friction between the seal and the inner ring, the bearing temperature is that uh, low that uh, the oil bleeding of the uh, crease is uh, much uh, less compared to a contacting seal. So this is also a big advantage in a vertical shaft application. And uh, you can see this uh, sealed singer in several uh, different applications, for instance, uh, in pumps, in a vertical shaft, in the electric motor, in uh, scroll compressors, in elevator gearboxes, where we have a, a scroll gearbox, uh, sorry, a warm gearbox, and also in uh, mixers uh, in uh, wastewater treatment. Another new uh, bearing what we have uh, launched uh, some years ago is a bearing uh, with the 40 degree contact angle. So it's the standard uh, design, so to say, but we have equipped this bearing with a new brass cage. And this brass cage uh, gives a lot of uh, uh, yeah, additional uh, speedability to this uh, bearing. The designation itself uh, is unchanged, but uh, the customer gets, uh, let's say, the same bearing with 30% uh, higher limiting speedability. What have we done on the cage? Uh, on the top, you see the new design of the cage, and on the bottom, the previous design. And uh, you can immediately see that uh, we have uh, improved the, the geometry itself. So this uh, leads to better lubrication fill formation between the, the ball and the cage itself. You have uh, more space for the crease as this uh, cross section is smaller of this new cage. And uh, due to this uh, better yeah, lubrication fill formation, you have uh, reduced temperatures, reduced uh, noise and vibrations. On this graph, you can see very nice uh, the previous design in red and the lower temperature of the new bearings with the new brass cage. And all of these uh, puzzle stones lead to an extended bearing service life at the end. And then we did the next step. We introduced a new ring design on the market uh, and equipped uh, this bearing then with the new brass cage, uh, and we had uh, then the 25 degree contact angle bearings born. And uh, this uh, variant is even uh, uh, able to cope 20% uh, higher uh, speeds. So we have here in the graph the previous design uh, with 100% limiting speed, then 30% higher the items equipped with uh, the new brass cage, and then the combination of the new brass cage and 25 degree contact angle, what allows uh, even higher speeds. And in addition, due to the new uh, ring design, uh, the bearings are more robust against uh, misalignment and also more robust against the uh, XL shock loads. And the big advantage uh, Paul already shown before is that uh, is it that it's possible now to arrange uh, a 25 and a 40 degree angle contact ball bearing next to each other uh, if the bearings are universally matchable. And this uh, leads also to, to other possibilities. Uh, for instance, in this uh, vacuum pump industry, 
So we have here a typical arrangement of a CRB and two angular contact ball bearing. And for new design, uh, you can uh, do more compact uh, designs. Uh, what uh, leads to lower friction is uh, less uh, amount of bearings are needed. And then at the end of the, yeah, you end up with lower system costs. So this is another possibility what uh, we want to present to you today. So Paul, this was the end of my part. Thank you. Yeah, as you see, a lot of new possibilities, especially with, uh, I'm very fond of this 25 five degree bearing concept because it it was developed due to the trend of higher speeds um, and more compact high speed designs. So it will help you as customers to design new machine concepts or to improve the current current concepts like shown here in this example. So we are very well in time. That's that's good. Um, I have to take back the control or can you give it to, back to me? Uh, it's okay already. Yeah, the next section will be quite different bearing arrangements and uh, let's say quite different size of pumps. You see it here already on the screen um, because there might be customers here or people who are designing this type of, for example, large slurry pumps or sewage pumps, even vertical designs. And uh, here, the bearing concepts can be completely different, as we will see. So what you might find in these larger um, slurry or heavy duty pumps is due to the size of the design, you might find issues with, you might have to deal with shaft bending, or you might, uh, uh, which is probably even more often the case, have to deal with shaft elongation due to thermal uh, effects, temperature increases, or due to contamination, uh, the impeller might get unbalanced and you might find yourself with heavy rotating radial loads or due to the operating conditions, changing flows and pressures, the forces, the radial and the ratio between radial and thrust force might change all the time. And this can lead to issues which are mentioned here. <coughs> For example, when you have shaft elongation or strong misalignments or similar things, you might find that your spherical roller bearings that are used are only loaded on, on one side. So you get very heavy loads on one side and unloaded rows on the other side, which can lead to spoiling as you see on the image below. Or when there is rotating loads or a lot of changing loads, you might find fretting on the outer diameter of the bearing or on the bearing housing bore or on the shaft. So this indicates, all these indicates <coughs> that something's uh, not perfect uh, with the application, of course, and uh, you might have to deal with uh, different bearing arrangements. And one arrangement that has careful already developed quite some years ago, but is still sort of the state of the art in the bearing in this industry is the self-aligning concept, which you see on the screen here. So you see that uh, it consists of two or three um, self-aligning bearing types, a spherical roller bearing number one, which is quite common. If, you, if the thrust loads are very high or for vertical designs, you use them also a spherical roller thrust bearing. That's the number two. And then uh, a unique SKF bearing innovation made quite some time ago is the carb bearing, the SKF toroidal roller, be roller bearings. And you see an animation below what this special bearing can do. It can not only ac accomplish or accommodate misalignments of the bearing, uh, or it can not only accomplish uh, shaft elongation and axial movements, but it can deal cope with both type of effects and that's the unique point about this bearing it can deal with axial movement and with with some misalignment which you can see in the animation below here is a, a case <clears throat> and i want to come back here on this vertical pump design where 
a specific uh, self-aligning arrangement and is used with a specific type of lubrication design. The application case is rather recent. The uh, customer wanted to upgrade his uh, pump series, sewage pump series, uh, even the catalog series. And uh, he wanted to make it uh, flexible in the use for grease and oil. So also he wanted to have an oil lubricated solution, but without uh, the need that the customer, <coughs> sorry, without the, the need that the customer now adds a complete new oil lubrication, extra oil lubrication or circulation system. So first of all, the bearing arrangement was optimized and different arrangements that are basically possible were design, uh, were gone through and looked at, especially how do you look at it nowadays with modern simulation tool, the SimPro tool that SKF has, which I mentioned in the beginning. And specifically in this case, not only SKF was using this tool, but as it's written here on the bottom, the customer got access to this SimPro tool, to the SimPro quick version, and he could do certain parameter studies himself in a very in a very easy way. So as Kev could handle over the model or the customer models himself, and then he can do the parameter studies in 3D and static, both static and dynamic uh, way. So this was first that the bearing uh, system was optimized to avoid uh, you know stresses or too high loads on certain bearing stations or due to misalignment. And then the oil lubrication design was uh, made. And um, as I said, customer wanted to go to oil without adding an oil circulation system. And these thrust uh, spherical roller bearings, they have this nice feature that they can pump a little bit of oil. So the design that was made here with the right flow was a self-circulating oil bath a system where no external oil lubrication system is necessary. So this was quite an innovation for, for the customer. And of course, also for the end customers. Okay, um, then we come uh, to this topic of ceramic, hybrid ceramic bearings, which I mentioned a few times. And uh, the headline here is from the application point of view from the field case point of view is pure, pure, poor lubrication, sorry, poor lubrication or oil-free lubrication. I start with a case here before explaining more about hybrid bearings. Um, quite some time ago, a customer had issues with fuel pumps in locomotive diesel pumps. You see an old version here on the top. The, the actual one is a more modern one, but I didn't use it here for <coughs> copyright reasons. But the, these in these pumps, the bearings are lubricated by the diesel fuel. And diesel fuel, as you can see here, typical as viscosity is below three centistokes, or could be even at high temperatures, two or <clears throat> two centistokes. And this is normally not enough to lubricate the normal steel bearing. So the solution here was hybrid ceramic bearings, still with steel rings, but balls made from ceramic rollers. And you see different versions of, of such bearings here with ceramic rolling elements and they are showing superior topology. They can cope with very well thin films. They reduce the wear because you don't have metal to metal contact even in Brunelling. If some of you have Brunelling issues, there is, can be a solution for that. They can, in other cases, especially machine tools, run to very high speeds, but also in comp high speed compressors, this is an issue. They are very low weight be interesting or is interesting for example for formula one and other applications and they're also electrically insulated so in certain cases they can replace also insulated electrically insulated bearings here a case um, that is i would say very uh, typical and uh, good to see because this is actually what we see more and more out there in this case, it's a typical API or refinery oil, oil and gas application, crude oil distillation plant and uh, typical API 610 bearing type. In this case, a symmetric type of centrifugal pump. And the customers also due to the hot climate had a lot of hot running alarms and bearings were running hot. 
lot frequent bearing failures, the mean time between failure between one year. So SCAF analyzed both the operating conditions and the lubrication system, and um, very clearly it turned out, yeah, the oil lubrication conditions are such that especially in summer, it's an issue for the, for the bearings. So first of all, a modified lubrication system was installed, purge mist lubrication was proposed, and uh, as a also very fast fix, uh, hybrid ceramic bearings. So this is now some of these bearings that are used nowadays here. It's, it's both angulars and cylindricals and, and DGPs depend, depending on the, the pump type because there's a lot of different pumps involved. And so now not even cooling fans are used uh, needed anymore. The running temperatures are much lower. The mean time between failures a factor two or three higher at least and maintenance costs reduced dramatically. And one of the last cases here is uh, a very specific one, but um, as you know, for example, uh, liquid um, gas, liquid natural gas or also other liquid gases are used, are also important for the energy transition, at least as a, as a transi transition technology. So a lot of liquidification plants are built nowadays for natural gas. Um, and uh, when you transport these gases, of course, you have to compress them on the one hand. The other side, you have to to pump out the liquid gas uh, when you come to the harbor. And on the left bottom, you see some of these, these pumps that are pumping away the liquid gas from these containers here. Uh, and the specific thing about these pumps is they are completely sub submerged into the LNG fluid. And of course, they have to deal with extreme temperatures, depending on what type gas of gas it is. Could be two minus 200 degree, or if it's, it would be hydrogen, for example, it's even less. And the bearings are only lubricated by, in these pumps, by the fluid. You don't want to have oil here. And this is, of course, uh, the perfect application area for for such hybrid bearings, and in this case, you, it's not only uh, it's not only enough to have ceramic rolling elements. You even need stainless steel rings and special cage designs. So here, the solution was ceramic balls and nitrogen stainless steel, which is an offer from SKF. Uh, high performance, high toughness, and corrosion resistant steel. With this, in this case, for this low temperatures, special temperature stabilization and a special cage design and very important a careful choice of the bearing clearance. And um, you see here on the right, a typical case, this is a field case. I have to say not from, from this uh, pumps here, this is more from a different case dealing with very difficult uh, lubrication conditions, but a real case in the field, you can see for the catalog bearings, standard steel bearings, typical service life, and then for the hybrid ceramic bearings with a special nitrogen stainless steel, the life was a multiple of, of the original life, and of, of course the maintenance times and troubles went down dramatically. But it would be the same situation here if you would use standard bearings. Yeah, this brings me to the last uh, section I promised you in the beginning also to talk about a very recent and unique, really unique, globally unique bearing innovation in the sensorized area with condition monitoring area. The headline is bearing load sensing by light and uh, we'll show a video then in the end also, which you will find on YouTube. So what does it mean bearing load sensing by light? Some of you might have guessed already. What SKF developed here with a very experienced partner is a method how you fix glass fibers around the bearing circumference. Of course, you need to carefully design where and in which depth you put these glass fibers and uh, how you fix them to make it stable for long running times. 
but then you have a very simple mean to similar to strain gauges, but you don't need a lot of cable with strain gauges. You have only one fiber you can measure on multiple position around the circumference on, for example, eight positions with one, only one fiber. That's a good thing because you, you add into the fiber certain, you could say half permissible mirrors, which are reflecting the light. And from these signals, you can then measure the deformation of the ring and from this bearing loads if you do a proper calibration. So you get the very, you know, you don't get the usual cable salad, as we say, from, from strain gauge measurement, you get a very simple system, which is also very stable chemically, etc. And for example, if you measure forces around the circumference on several positions, you might find out that your bearings uh, load is completely misaligned or that the bearing <coughs> bearing uh, shaft alignment is not OK. And then you get loads in one direction or the loads. You can measure how the load is changing during the operation, which I will come back on the next slide. So you can measure a lot of things. Load, the load direction is very important, the load distribution. You can measure speed with with the same sensor only with one cable from you know the load distributions and so on you can judge the misalignment forces you can indirectly even say something about the, the flow through the pump if you know the pump curve uh, you can decide, uh, verify your design or you can use the tool for advanced condition monitoring and only one example what what is measured what a customer measured and actually he said he knows this from the school books, but uh, it's in real life. Uh, this is difficult uh, to under, under operation, under dynamic operation to measure. So a, a centrifugal pump and uh, this load sensing bearing with the fiber optics mounted here. And when you look on the flow lines on different flow conditions in the pump, this, this flow lines change a lot and with it, the direction of the radial force is changing a lot. So this radial force here. And what you see then if you look on the red curve, which is the radial, the, the magnitude of the radial force, you, I mean the pump experts, you know that uh, you have to, you should make sure that your pump is running in a kind of best efficiency point. And this is where the radial loads are quite low and uh, the flow lines are flowing, so to say, the fluid is flowing smoothly. Because otherwise you have you can have a lot of issues with vibration, cavitation and low efficiencies. So if you measure this load with this load sensing bearing and you can also say if, if your pump is running in, the, in a good efficiency point or you can, if, as I said, the pump curve even determine uh, the flow of, of your pump indirectly. That is actually uh, the last slide I have. Uh, of course, we will invite you to visit our skf.com homepage where there is a, even a specific section on industrial pumps and you can visit the Evolution magazine. But before we stop here, I would like to show you a video on this uh, fiber optic sensing, a very nice video that was made one time. So let's have a look here. I hope you you can hear then the, the sound. Please, Elin, let me know if, if that is working fine. I start it now. So this is the fiber fibers that are arranged in certain way around the bearing. Light is going through the fiber. There is some grating it's called break grating done on these fibers, which is kind of making some small mirrors into the, the fiber. Some light is reflected. At this, you can measure the elongation of, of the fiber similar to a strain gauge. And you can do this on several positions in one fiber, which makes it a very strong tool to avoid a lot of cabling and a lot of effort in mounting the bearing.
Okay, just a second. Some loading done. Let me just pause it for a second. As you can see, you can measure with one fiber. That, that's the strength. With one fiber, you can measure a lot of different things. Several loads on several positions, speeds, even if you do it correctly, temperature. And then you can derive, if you know how a bearing is functioning, you can derive a lot of things. Let me just restart it because at least on my screen the resolution is, is not good at the moment. Just a second. You can, of course, fiber optics have the advantage that the cables can be very long, the glass fiber cables, without losing the signal. Also, there is no chemical error resistance against chemical attack. And you can apply it to, to different pairing types, not to every size and every, but we are developing step by step. So just to make sure this is stopped. So I said this was the last slide. I thank you very much for attention.